Madam Moon, Dr. Thomas Walsh, fellow speakers. Bulabinaka, it is indeed an honor to join you all again this year from my island home, Fiji. With the preparation towards today's World Summit, I have been reflecting on all the UPF summits I have been fortunate to be a part of since my very first with the Universal Peace Federation in Seoul, 2013. Unification of the Korean Peninsula has been at the forefront of the agenda every year. Every year from my own experience and feelings, I have felt the strength, the faith and belief of everyone participating in the summit that uni unification is possible and will happen in our lifetimes. Reverend and Madam Moon understood that at the heart of Korea, a once unified Korea, there is a spiritual heritage as well as a common culture, tradition, language, and one people. It is such a beautiful sentiment, and it is what the foundation of your reunification will be, a reminder of what once was and what can be. In Fiji and the Pacific, we are a small, humble island nations, surrounded by the world's greatest ocean. Both land and ocean are part and parcel to our everyday lives. They both give us sustenance and strength, shelter, clothing, the air we breathe, the food we eat. They teach us to be strong, to be smart, and aware of our surroundings, and even tell us when bad weather is brewing. Also, our land and ocean teach us of unity and harmony. We are dependent on them for survival, and the land and ocean depend on us to be sustainable with our practices and allow them to replenish as they should. Our sisters and brothers in Palau put it so beautifully in their declaration, and I quote, it is a fabric of unity upon which we have woven individual and collective relationships and agreements on sustainable development now and into the future. It is our life and our future. We learned that with our scattered islands, we are stronger as one people. Though we have our cultural differences, our islands and our ocean tie us together as different cultures, but one Pacific people. For Korea, you only need to look back at what, nat at what nature intended from the beginning. The very ground you walk on is part of one peninsula, gifted to all Korean people. It is people that create divisions, but the land and the seas will be the first to remind you of what you share together of what you have in common. A key challenge for the Korean Peninsula, which is a challenge in nearly all countries and regions in achieving peace and positive development, is how to allow the many different voices that come together to come together in harmony. It is in harmony that different pitches and notes are brought and sung together. And it is a respect of differences and making those differences work together to move, to move forward as one. Reverend and Madam Moon knew and practiced their belief that unification would happen peacefully for all Korean people. And in setting up peace zones and soft power diplomacy, though a long and patient process, they have made more successful developments at peace and interaction of North and South than most governments put together have. They understood that peace is a process. It will not come simply, and it will take years of consistent nurturing and love, which is what they envisaged 30 years ago, which is why every year we speak of unification. It is stronger than the year before, and much more so than when the idea first came about. Following the leadership of the Universal Peace Federation, it is up to both leaders 
of the North and South to start providing more inclusive peace zones for their people and incentives and motivations for all Korean people towards peace. For many Koreans, I am sure beyond the politics, the laws, and the, nat and the national interest, each, indivi in each individual wants to live in peace and wants to know that those they love are at peace and safe too. Those who own land and have access to resources will naturally want those interests safeguarded. Those who don't will want opportunity. And those who were separated from their homes and families will want to be reunited. It will not be easy answering to the needs of all the Korean people. And they may not all get exactly what they want. But a consistent two-way dialogue and providing assurance and understanding is key to everyone getting what they need. One thing that cannot be overlooked in these processes is the family unit and the strength of the church and her people. Faith-based institutions will always lead their people to peace with values of respect for oneself and to value human life. The family unit is what people will fight for, to protect, to nurture, to ensure a safe future for. Economic incentives towards peace should begin with families, securing the family units, ensuring employment, education, shelter, food and water to begin, and where possible, allow the people to be at the center of this exchange to ensure interaction, inclusivity, diversity, kingship, and harmony. In saying that, I truly believe that it should be a Korean-led reunification. Other countries should support when necessary, but the Korean people are the peninsula's greatest resource. It is the Korean people who lived and survived the war. It is the Korean people who rebuilt after it and who will live and be directly affected by this the most. And I wholeheartedly believe that it is the Korean people who will achieve reunification and keep the peace for hundreds of years to come. It is also important for us as the international community to support the process as much as we can especially those powerful neighbors of China, Russia, Japan, and the United States of America, who have supported dialogue and who I am adamant will continue to do so, but following the lead of Korea. Furthermore, one cannot overlook the surroundings of the peninsula of the rich culture of the Asian continent. Major religions were born here hundreds of years ago before they spread to other parts of the world. Religions that have different backgrounds, but the same values of respect, respect for family, value of human life, and living a peaceful, harmonious life with oneself, your brethren, your environment, and your God. There is much in the natural world and geography that is already promoting peace, and the rich history with her regional brothers and sisters that will maintain long-term stability, unity, security, and prosperity. All stakeholders, governments, non-government organizations, civil society organizations, rights movements, have a part to play, like the international community. The support offered by these organizations is immeasurable. But I reiterate, at the essence of it all, Koreans should lead the reunification process with guidance and support from us all. With a combined population of just over 75 million, these organizations will be vital in ensuring that no one gets left behind, that all voices are heard and all lives are taken care of. In the grand scheme of things, it is our brothers and sisters in minorities that get overlooked and forgotten. And many of these NGOs and organizations 
have years of work dedicated to identifying cracks in plans and policies and knowing how to safeguard them for the better of all. To conclude, I take you back to the Pacific. This year, January the 16th, the Hunga Tonga, Hunga Hapai, underwater volcano erupted in the kingdom of Tonga with a force that caused tidal waves, ash fall, and acid rain in the Pacific region and affected Peru, Santa Cruz, and even communities in Alaska heard the explosion and felt part of the shock wave. A nuclear test organization in Antarctica picked up the blast on all of their 53 detectors. They have declared it as the biggest and loudest they have had on their radars that caused shock waves around the earth even days after initial eruption. An eruption like that has left many wondering, how has the kingdom of Tonga survived? Three lives were lost. May they rest in peace. They have lost much of their infrastructure. But Tongans are a people who have always counted their blessings and been resilient beyond belief. King George the Poe VI said, and I quote, it is not how much we have financially or the monetary assistance from overseas, but it is the willpower of the people and our belief in God so that we show love, help one another, and be compassionate. The people that can withstand difficulties are those that stand together. Finally, the volcanic er eruption that caused shock waves around the world, the coronavirus, that brought the world to a standstill remind us all that we share the same atmosphere, that we are all human at the end of the day. Looking past our ambitions, power struggles, we know what is important, that we have our needs and our vulnerabilities. And it is on each other and our environment we must respect and depend on to survive. May we remember that as we move forward together in our priest processes and in supporting a united Korean Peninsula. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, formal First Lady from Fiji, Adi Koila Naila Tikau.